Recently, someone left a comment that I talk a lot about the protagonist. What advice do I have about the antagonist? One thing you can you can look at the word antagonist to antagonize. Antagonize cause someone to become hostile. Okay, that's not as good. So when you think when you antagonize, you irritate them, you bug them, you disturb them, you disrupt them, you interrupt them, you ignore them, you neglect them, you poke them with a stick, you uh, pour an irritating substance on them, you trip them, you get them fired from their job, you push them off the side of a ship, you do all these terrible, awful things. The antagonist is someone who is a problem, who is a force of no good, who is getting in the way of what of uh, the good livelihood of the protagonist, is a threat, is actively destroying the life of the protagonist. These are very active things. These are things that are that are that are happening in the story. A lot of the times in storytelling, we ask ourselves, how can we make the scary characters scary? And you know, you you think of Darth Vader with that breathing mechanism, the and cinematically, that's a great scary. You you wouldn't have Bambi with a breathing breathing device that walks around, you know, with the meadow walking in the meadow, flute playing in the background, and you know, but that's all surface level. <clears throat> And it's 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 a lot of fun to think cinematically about things and 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 dress our characters up to be scary or whatever personality type they are. One of my first experiences with writing an antagonist, I can remember in public school, I wrote a story. I showed it to the girl next to me. She was like, "That's." you know, basically saying that it was really a disturbing story. And I always felt, I felt bad about it afterwards. I felt that somehow I was sick and wrong for having written this story. And keep in mind, the best stories are the ones that are not afraid to get sick and wrong, as long as they are done to good purpose. I think if anyone wants to develop into the most effective storyteller they can develop into. They need to get over that fear. Also, when I started going to writers groups, I realized that people were sharing things that you would not nor you know, when they were reading their writings, a lot of the times these were not things that you would hear people just discussing in coffee houses. A good story is written to be experienced deep within the reader, not not in the normal social realms. If people aired their dreams, that could be frightening, embarrassing. The deepest feelings we have are the things that we filter in normal social life. But to become a better writer, we need to question those filters and recognize that when people go to read they're not looking for the filtered material that they hope to find in public so in public you don't want to be sick frightening irritating all of those things you know because you want to enjoy the benefits of, of people enjoying your company but if you but think about it if you go to a story if and the story isn't scary it's not a good story you're bored with it and you don't read it well what makes for a good scary exciting story is that there are violent 
scary, destructive, often the most violent, frightening, disturbing things that we could think of are the very things in the story that make it a frightening, exciting story. Storytelling is the effective place for us to face our fears. Writers, they they learn how to, to live in this new mind space where they are putting together material for the public, but it's it's of the most, it's of the things we usually, you know, like if you ever talk to someone who recently had a loved one pass away, the term pass away is a euphemism. We, we want to make everything gentler in public. The truth is, is that person died. So what makes for good social skills does not make for good writing skills. But I'm not saying that, okay, go ahead, just, you know, write whatever, you know, write about all those scary, frightening things without any thought about it. I'm not saying that. You need to start thinking about it in different ways and understand, understanding the the way those things will be received. Who goes to see movies about children getting abducted? Parents do. The reason parents do is because that is a fear parents have. I'm not a parent. I don't have that fear. I don't I don't have that isn't a concern of mine and so I don't find myself when I hear about a movie like that, I'm not interested in going to, not as interested in going to see it as a parent would be. If you're a human who enjoys re- relatively stable, safety, health, food, it's extremely likely you're one of the majority of people who show the human nature that humans don't just enjoy the good life, they, it's in human nature to prepare for the bad things that could happen. And we do that this through being entertained by scary stories, by exciting dramas. And it, it isn't just about getting killed. It's about having our heart broken. It's about anything that could go wrong. This is, this is so much part of our lives. We're, we're not going to just say, oh, everything's fine. Let's sit back and enjoy it. We're going out and seeking and dwelling on the bad things that can happen, but we're this is so much part of human nature that we don't see it as a negative thing. We have fun. This is entertainment. This is the way we enjoy ourselves. This is what we do on our day off. One of the biggest things that gets in the way of good writing is people don't want to come across as antisocial. People don't want <laughs> to no one shows up at a party and starts talking about rape, you know, the, unless you're Sarah Silverman. Good art is about, you have to develop a new sense, not our social sense, but for going and finding and paying attention to all the things that our social instincts tell us to avoid and not talk about and not bring up at dinner parties. Before coming to terms with this duality that every storyteller faces, we have these two intentions defeating each other. On one, we want to make our story exciting and frightening, but on the other hand, we don't want to we don't want the story to seem sick or twisted or anything like that and you you can see you can see what happened just through the last several decades alfred hitchcock used to negate this taboo about truly frightening storytelling it would he'd kind of adopt this sort of tongue in cheek you know, this sort of gravedigger's humor about about the fact that he was dealing with some truly sick and twisted stuff in his movies because it was it was such a social taboo at the time that he negated it through humor. 
then I remember in in some early Stephen King interviews, Stephen King was was like uh, apologetic about you know what, kind of wondering am I am I a bad person for dwelling on all these ugly happenings in my story and then we move forward into the 2000s and it's really not that much of a social taboo because because people recognize that it is serving a useful social purpose in a very public way deal with these most private of fears in in a way that that eventually leads to <clears throat> everyone making better decisions, being happier and more effective dealing with real life problems. Creating effective antagonists. Everyone's got a good side and a bad side. And anyone who denies that is in self-denial, which is very common. Everyone to some extent is in self-denial. And where would humans be without extremely uh, effective self-denial mechanisms firmly in place. But let's start off with, with stage one of developing good antagonists in our writing. First of all, let's turn around situation. Later I heard the Amazon management level being described as a Tasmanian devil work environment and the Tasmanian devils part of their social behavior is they will is fighting and biting each other's faces if that'll give you an idea of how some work environments can be so in my early 20s this was where a competitive work environment turned to a lot of social behavior that for me was really kind of bewildering at the time. Being able to look at that, all of the things I encountered at that time from all kinds of different angles taught me a lot about the interesting power plays that can go on. And it was really, in terms of getting material, that was one of the the greatest resources for material as far as antagonists, <laughs> as far as appreciating that people who on a conscious level wanted to be good people, wanted to think of themselves as honest and worthwhile people, and but on a subconscious level were willing to destroy, disrupt, interrupt, agitate, antagonize. So my first advice is to journal, to start gathering, to make a study of real activity that can be called antagonist activity, to look at the reasons and, and the situations and what it does to the victim. Any real life situation you're in, stop and tell yourself, okay, I'm also trying to survive and make it to my next paycheck, but I want to I want to be a witness here. I want to learn as much as I can. This is an the one of the best opportunities I'm going to get to really get a good look at the the underside of human nature and I'm going to spend as much time gathering as much information as I can and using it and thinking about it, thinking about the way people act together and what is the real nature of good and bad and what constitutes a threat. If your character is an apple and a knife is the antagonist, the threat is that in the story that knife can move down and actually cut through the apple. There is an action that can happen in the story that would mean real destruction within that story. Most people really don't like to be in dysfunctional, toxic social situations. And they, they, put, up, they put up shields, they put up barriers to it. 
but it's it's those situations where the artist can learn from the most it happens to me all the time i'm on the bus and some crazy person is spouting a bunch of destructive language and my first response put the headphones on and it's like wait i'm i'm putting up a barrier i had a coworker that was character assassinating everyone in the company and I found I started making these comment comics and I created an exaggerated character of that character and I would laugh about it and I thought it was so funny and it made for a really funny character and it also helped me unstick myself from having gone through that situation. So you've started to use real life experiences to inform your bad, evil characters. Let's take it to the next level. You are a bad, evil character. I am a bad, evil character. It is human instinct to deny that we have these two sides. It is, it is so high, hardwired into our brain that even if you meditate your way to a very clear understanding of this, the next moment you'll have forgotten it and it'll seem impossible that it could ever be this way. Every human has a good side and a bad side and the conscious mind lives on their experience of their good side and they are most in denial of their bad side and this is one of the kernels of human nature it's so it's it's similar to lucid dream of dreaming if you've ever tried to lucid dream there there's something about the human mind what happens a lot of the times is like as soon as you have a lucid dream as soon as you're in a dream and consciously realize you're dreaming you'll dream that you woke up and you'll you'll but then you're not lucid dreaming anymore because you think that you've woken up but you're still dreaming the minute you think you've really appreciated it and seen it you you wake up you snap out of it and you go back into denial charles dickens wrote about homeless children about the terrible conditions in england of all the homeless children they had in their society at the time and really uncovering it. Most people in that society were in denial about it and making it very apparent in his stories. And his stories are a big reason that that society changed. The characters in Oliver Twist are truly frightening characters. There are some chapters in Oliver Twist where it's really focused on the bad guys, you know, the ones who get financial gain from exploiting these these children that are about to fall over and die from starvation written in a very realistic way and these two greedy man and wife are in a kind of gross romantic comedy flirting with each other in a way that's funny and gross and it's extremely entertaining and when I was reading it, I got the impression that Charles Dickens was really enjoying writing this truly sick and twisted. This was a focus on the bad side of humanity. So in such great resolution with, with so many details and, and, and so much information about a truly twisted criminal minds how could someone who cares about what happens to people in society have such insight into this really twisted behavior about a year ago i read an article about how charles dickens was really neglectful of his his children and his heirs basically like you learn how to swim or you're gonna sink 
gave them lessons in hard reality early on and I'm, I don't I don't want to talk too much about it because it would be more accurate if you go and find the articles yourself. When I read that article, aha, Charles Dickens has a bad side, has a destructive side. So it's very likely at this point that you're saying, no, I mean, I, I, if, if, if I went and I don't, you know, a lot of people neglect a lot of people don't develop their bad side. They say that evil is like a, a vicious, starving dog. If you if you feed it, it grows. So, if you've followed through with your your healthy intentions to become uh, so to live in such a way so that others in, enjoy your existence in their lives, it's very likely that you've neglected that that vicious dog and it hasn't grown very much if you're writing you create characters in your mind and these are like real people they speak to you they some some characters you can talk to them at any point in the in the day and they'll they'll you know from deep in your subconscious they'll speak back oh hi i haven't spoken to you for a while and i've developed these characters many of them shaped from real life people and real life misbehavior through working creatively i have fed that vicious dog the violent destructive side of my personality i am not worried about this because without wanting to this whole learning process about good and bad, beneficial, destructive, makes me a nicer person. And try to imagine what those around me, how they are experiencing the situation. Feeding the vicious dog doesn't mean that I'm going to go rob a bank or blow up the people in the house. I'm looking through the window over there. I won't, I won't do it. Don't worry about it. If you want to write really great stories, consider that you want to be open about your own bad side. So you've gone out and you've discovered people that have displayed, they have put on for all the world to see their bad side far outpowering their good side, allowed those characters to become characters in your own imagination, and you've learned that this kind of creative work is actually a hell of a lot of fun. It is fun to, in our imaginations, become the bad guy. So if you look at advanced storytellers like Stephen King, you can see that they become firmly rooted in enjoying becoming the bad guy, becoming the evil, becoming the destructive person in their imagination. And these are people that are very responsible in society. In their imagination, they will as full-heartedly become the wrongdoer as someone who's going to actually park their car and walk across the street and go and rob the bank, or who's going to break down the door on that house and pistol whip a family while they're shaking with fear. And while we're writing our stories, we abandon ourselves to becoming in our imagination those terrible people who do terrible things. Remember, the public wants this. You want this. If you go to a movie and you aren't entertained, it isn't getting to the heart of, of a fear. It, it, isn't, it isn't getting inside. It isn't taking, it, 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 it isn't truly scaring us or exciting to us. And I'm not just talking about thrillers. This can happen in a romance. If you watch a romance movie, you look at the fears. The what could be destroyed is a, a rare, great, romantic getting together and the real threats that can happen and they are truly frightening because the stakes are high and in the romance if it's a person antagonizing the possibility of that romance happening that person is 
doing truly villainous behavior. They could be character assassinating. They could be spreading lies. They could something that 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 is really looked down and spat upon by people. Really thought of as really that's wrong that so and so did that in that movie. I'm not suggesting that you become bad. I'm saying you already are. We already all of us have a bad side and I'm I, you know, I I can hardly actually experience it in myself. I have memories like I have memories of of momentary lucid dreaming. I have memories of momentarily seeing myself for who I truly am and not being in denial. But that vicious dog is waiting for all of us and artists we're lucky. Artists, writers, we have a rare opportunity to actually capitalize on on this whole situation. I think it's worth mentioning. For me, it's been my experience that when I use the vicious dog, it's always big part of it is humor. When I when I become these truly bad people in my imagination. There's also somehow this sense of humor about it, my enjoying of becoming them. I'm also laughing at them. I'm also, um, I think my good side is still there off in the wings saying, that is so hilarious, wrong, funny, what is happening. So that might help with some people in, in developing their evil side. People like informed fiction. The more you make a study of human nature, the more that you look around you, listen, contemplate, try to figure out, try to put yourself in others' experience, try to, to gain as much infor information. The more people like informed, high-resolution stories, Good decision making in story writing comes from a deep understanding of the real powers that be, what really is happening. And it can be for reality based storytelling or fantastic storytelling, informed storytelling, a, a study. Commit to a lifetime of learning. I, I have never stopped, I have never gotten to a point where people are so predictable that I'm not surprised. I, if I do take the earplugs out on the bus, I do learn something from what that caustic person on the bus is, is spewing, spewing out. And don't forget to take care of yourself. A real commitment to an artistic life. That is a raw life. That is a raw existence. So irony upon irony, if you want to get better at identifying with villainous characters, it really stabilizes the whole situation, a real commitment to, to being a helpful, strong member of society, a commitment to honesty, a commitment to kindness, a commitment to walking gently through situations and being considerate. Doing this when we are away from our desk, away from our, our keyboard, can give us a stronger ability to, to a greater security in creating villainous characters when we're lost in the world of imagination. Because in the end, the real takeaway of all this is that we're learning about bad, destructive. <clears throat> because without society, there is no good and bad. Good and bad is all relative to living in a society. Storytelling is the way that we enhance our society, that we commit to improving our society for future generations and so that we can enjoy the benefits of living in a society. We're all on this tiny globe. We're all on, the, all on this tiny rock. <clears throat> like it or not, more and more every day, we're becoming a single society. 
I hope that you become a terrible villain tonight while you're writing. I hope that, that you, in your imagination, r fervor, the blood drips from your fangs and you scream with pleasure at the sky as you blow up the buildings around you and have a great time and laugh. If you like my videos and want to get me back, please hit the like button, subscribe, tell another writer friend, another artist friend. You can get the link out, Twitter, Google Plus, and all those. Please take the time to go check out my illustrated, narrated story, Terrible Immunity, put in episode form at solomation.com. Again, I hope that you're writing, you have a great time, and it, and it enhances your life, your writing. And have a good day.